Hi everyone, it's me Denshi. But before I begin this tutorial on DNS Mask, I'd just like to showcase all the fan art I've received since my last video. Thanks to everyone who submitted fan art. Anyways, let's get straight to the tutorial. So, as a little introduction to this video, I'm sure many of you are aware, the internet works with a DNS system. So I've had a website like denshi.org, and I ping it. As you can see, this gives me back a number over here, which is the IP address of the server which is hosting my website, or specifically that domain. The way this works is by something called DNS records. So there's a program you can get for Linux, it's included in the bind9 utilities package, and the program is called dig. We're gonna have a look at dig a little bit more later when we're testing our DNS server, but dig lets you type in any domain name and it returns every single DNS entry for it. So in this case, uh, there's a DNS entry for my website that points to this IP address. And that's all fair enough, right? We know that's how the internet works. That's how you type in the name of a website which is legible. I mean, you can remember denshi.org. However, you can't remember 107.189.31 and so forth, right? So it's better for you to learn the name and then to have a DNS server turn that into a number, which then corresponds to the actual server. We all understand that. Now, sometimes, however, we don't want that to happen. Like, for example, if your kids are going to Netflix.com and you want to stop them from going to Netflix.com, well, how do we make that turn into a zero? So on Linux, I'm sure you're familiar, there's a file called Etsy Hosts. And in this file, we can type in an address like 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 .0. And then after it, type in the domain name, like for example, netflix.com. And as you can see, when I try to ping netflix.com, it'll give me back a 000, so 127001, which is just the code for the local host. So nothing, basically. I can't access the website. And if I try to open my browser and type in netflix.com, as you can see, it gives nothing. The problem, however, is, is that most domain systems have multiple subdomains that are complicated, and also, editing the Etsy hosts file is reasonable for, like, your home computer, but it's not reasonable if you have to block a website on an entire network. Well, let's say you're doing it at home, or at school, or at work or something, you wanna block everybody from accessing a certain website, then what we're gonna do today is set up a DNS server for ourselves to use. So you can go to your router settings and change your DNS server. We're gonna take a look at how to change it on your computer and stuff later, so that any websites you want and any amount of subdomains you want can be blocked. So just clarifying, when I say subdomains, I mean stuff like, I think there's a subdomain like videos.netflix.com or something. Or there isn't apparently, but I'm sure that I think there's vids.netflix.com or I don't know, maybe there's www.netflix.com, right? Yeah, here we are. So as you can see, this isn't blocked. I'm getting back uh, an IP address over here because we haven't added www before netflix.com in our Etsy hosts file. So the problem occurs that you end up having many subdomains, the little code that comes before the final domain, which is netflix.com in this case. Uh, and we can't reasonably block all of those just by guessing them. And there are lists online, but often they get changed and they're incomplete. And it's far more effective just to block the source, to block everything that comes with the text netflix.com. So sorry if that sounds a little bit elaborate, let's get straight to it in this tutorial. So just to clarify, I'm going to be using this tutorial, which is written by me. This is linked in the description. And I'm also going to be using a server, which is a VPS over here, which is once again hosted by me. You do need a VPS running Debian for this tutorial to work. So we want to install two packages. Obviously, we're going to install DNS mask, right? But we're also going to install a different tool called DNS utils. And DNS utils includes that fantastic dig package, which we're going to use to test. So once again, if you type in dig and say a website like denshi.org, uh, that's just going to return the DNS entries for it. However, the cool thing about dig is we can specify what DNS server to use. So if we type in dig, say at 8.8.8.8, that's the Google DNS server, or maybe 1.1.1.1, that's Cloudflare's, or 9.9.9.9, that's Quad9, and then type in a domain. This is actually going to go to 9.9.9.9 and ask it for the DNS entry. And as you can see, there it is, denshi.org. This way, we can test specific DNS servers, including our own, to make sure that it's actually working. Now let's set up the actual DNS server. So if you scroll down over here, as you can see, uh, you have to go to a file called etsy-dnsmask.conf. So going through this file, it's a pretty big file. There's a lot of stuff to look in it. I recommend searching through it with Vim by just typing slash and then typing in what you want to search for. I'm going to search for inter face equals and there it is interface equals we want to uncomment this line and replace it with well what well we want to replace it with the name of the interface the network interface that we want to connect to so 
To check that, you can type a command called IPA in your server. And as you can see, the one I'm connected to, which is connected to the internet with my global IP address, is called ETH0. So just make sure you put the right one in there. I'm gonna put in ETH0. So I'm gonna type that in over here, ETH0, and there you go. The next thing you wanna do is look for the option that says domain-needed. So uncommenting that will make sure that anybody who makes requests to your DNS server, if that ever happens, uh, is basically forced to ask for a proper DNS name with a dot like netflix.com, denshi.org, and not just a random string of text that could cause spam. So now that we're done changing all that configuration stuff, we can restart uh, DNS mask. And once we restart it with the systemctl restart command, we should be able to do dig at localhost. So localhost is just the IP address of the server since we're running on the server and then type in a domain name like denshi.org, and boom, there it is. We got a reply from our server, honest to goodness, from our server with that DNS. Now, if we type in a name like netflix.com, however, as you can see, it's returning the appropriate IP addresses, and we don't want it to do that. I'm gonna show you two ways in which you can block DNS requests in DNS mask. So the first one, you go into Etsy hosts and edit it as usual, like we did on our local computer, just by typing in 0.0.0.0 and then typing in, like not denshi.org, don't block my website, please, netflix.com, right? If we restart DNS mask, it will read that hosts file. And now if we type dig at localhost netflix.com, as you can see, it returns 0.0.0.0. But that still isn't good enough because it's not blocking things like www.netflix. Dot com. And Netflix is notorious for having lots of different subdomains. As you can see, www.netflix.com is still working, which is not what we want. So how are we going to block it? Well, it's actually really simple. There's a setting in the actual DNS mask configuration where we can go to this section over here that says address, uncomment it, and type in any domain we want and what we want it to redirect to. So I'm going to type over here, um, netflix.com. Now this, by default, will block every subdomain and pretty much every string of text which has the word netflix.com in it. And this will allow us to block everything related to Netflix. So your kids, the maybe your students at school, the people working in your workplace will be unable to access that website and they'll actually be forced to do actual work. So now that we've done that, we can systemctl restart DNS mask like before, if I can spell today. Um, and then if we do the dig thing, dig at localhost www.netflix.com, as you can see, it replies with 127001, which is the same as 0000, kind of. In the same way, we can also type literally anything, like any subdomain Netflix could come up with, that's just a random string of numbers, and it will always reply with 127001. So this way, we've blocked every possible request to Netflix, and your kids can stop watching those brain rotting shows. Anyways, there is one more thing I want to show you guys, and it's actually how to employ DNS mask. Well, actually two more things. The first thing is you're probably wondering, when I do dig at localhost and type in say, I don't know, a website like denshi.org, how is this server getting this address? Well, it's simple. It's using its own DNS servers, which are configured uh, in this file called resolve.conf, etsy resolve.conf. So if you go here, you can change the DNS servers the actual server is using. So for example, I can type name server uh, 9.9.9.9.9. And this will use 9.9.9.9 .9 to do any DNS requests. Anyways, now that we're done with that, let me show you how to actually use DNS mask on your local computer or specifically how to access and change any DNS server. So if you're on Windows, this is probably in your um, control panel. You can go to control panel and change your DNS settings. If you're on Mac OS, I think there's something similar. Uh, but on Linux, there's two ways of doing it. First, there's actually a file like there was on the server called resolve.conf. And in here, you can change your server. As you can see, it's set to my local one. I can change it to my IP address of my server. So let me just ping my IP address. I think it's um, denshi.org. I'm hosting the DNS server on that same server. It's 107.189.31.10, right? And I can put that in here. And as you can see now, now that I've set that uh, DNS server, I can go and I can ping anything.netflix com and it replies with 127001 because we were able to successfully set it up. Now there is one more thing you might want to change. So in my case, I use something called Network Manager to manage my network connections. And if you don't open up your network connections, for example, you can go to IPv4 settings and say automatic DHCP addresses only and set your DNS server here uh, to like 107.38, whatever it was, right? So that's a pretty cool way of, of doing that. However, I normally just keep it on automatic or set it manually uh, by myself with a different DNS server. But anyways, 
that was how to set up your very own DNS server to block people watching junk on your network or how to control like traffic on your school or, in your school or something. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. The article I showed in the video is linked in the description. I've been Denshi. Goodbye.